Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Zelf, and welcome to another PC build because I didn't do a video for a while. Today's video is going to be the under $600 gaming or console killer gaming PC. And the reason why I'm doing this again ish um, with a bit of difference in the parts, at least, is because I recently got a PS5. Uh, the controller is kind of obvious at this point, but. There, there, here's a video. This is how the PS5 looks like. I got it. I have it. Uh, I've been using it recently. And, um... Well, let's just say I kind of realized that maybe getting a PC is probably better than getting a console. <laughs> so the whole idea is that while consoles are supposed to be the cheaper option... Well, was the cheaper option and kind of reliable and everything... Everything went to in a horrible pathway to to so to consoles in general. Mostly, it went well. It, it got destroyed with Xbox for obvious reasons uh, that's happening these days. And for PlayStation, let's just say it's kind of going slow and nothing is new releasing. And for the price point you pay for, you kind of just pay lots of money for an empty box that's supposed to be used for gaming but nothing else you, you know what i'm going with it, with this thing it, it's it's a waste of money from some people that's why these days a lot of people are going towards pcs i mean i kind of kind of obvious at this point of why they everyone's going to pcs these days not everyone but a lot of people um but a lot of people are asking for something cheaper a lot of people are asking for something that can perform as as well as powerful as a console while having a similar price point for that console now if you if we're talking about the ps4 time yeah the ps4 had the more cheaper price point which is the reason why it was complicated to make a pc that was pretty much against that but nowadays the consoles are getting expensive i mean it's 500 dollars for a ps5 uh, maybe even more if you think about other things that you might get with it some of them it's kind of useless especially with the slim when you have to get a freaking stand for that door uh and some other things in there you're kind of spending at this point on 600 which is why this pc exists this is the pc that will pretty much gives you a reason to not get a console just get this guy forget a ps5 forget an xbox series x or whatever forget about that get this guy this guy you just spend $50 more, or, or 60-ish, 70, $70 more, and you get something that is 10 times better. Okay, it's not 10 times better in terms of performance. It's almost the same performance, since that they perform the same graphically. But usability in game-wise, and also you don't have to pay online every single month to play games online, uh, it's much, much better than getting a console. Much better. So, without wasting time, let's get right to the PC build, shall we? Now, starting off with this list is the processor. Uh, the processor of choice is going to be the Ryzen 5 3600. I know, it's an old processor, very old processor, to be honest. And comparing to the processor that's on the PlayStation 5, which I have to give points to, to the PS5 on the processing side, yeah, the, the PS5's processor is slightly faster than this one, with that said. Uh, this is a six core processor anyways, and for gaming it should be good not the best But should be good and it includes a good cooler with it anyways uh, You could go with something more powerful though, but you will have I mean you will be spending a little bit more even a lot more um, With that said It is a choice. I would recommend a Intel Core i5 That hopefully has a 10 core processor type of style or rather the whole performance and efficiency type of cores style. Um, it would perform a little bit better than this and you would be equal to the PlayStation 5's processor in some ways. With that said, if you're planning to play games mostly and you don't really care about that how much the processor performs, even though it would be beneficial, but not to that extent. Other than some bottlenecking. Um, then this processor would be more than good enough. It's not the best, but it will perform really well, so we're going with it. For the motherboard, it went with the ASRock B550M-HDV. It's a micro ATX motherboard. It's the cheapest motherboard you can get. <laughs> it's not exactly the best motherboard in the world, but 
if you're planning to make it a PC that's that has some uh, hardware that's similar to the PS5, then this motherboard will at least help. It's a B515 motherboard, so it should support for Gen 4 SSDs. It should, should support for this processor and even me, maybe even newer processors. Um, in a general sense, it's a good motherboard. The only downside for it really, other than the really horrible this, uh, there's literally no cooling for that. Um, well, there's no Type-C, I guess. The, the, at least the PS5 has two Type-C ports rather than two Type-A ports. With that said, it's not really that important. So, yeah, it's good. For the RAM, we went with the 16 gigs, 3000 3, megahertz OLED RAM. Yeah, it's 3000, it's not 3200. I would prefer to have win with a 3200 or even 3600. That would have been equal to the PlayStation 5. With that said, for the price point, I had to go with it, especially since it wasn't a cheap price point. Um, it works, it's it's a good RAM, but I would prefer a faster one. With that said, if you want 16 gigs that works with this PC, this is what, what we're going with. Now for the storage, we went with the 11 JPS 800. It's a one terabyte gen four SSD. It's at least by paper, fast SSD. It is an SSD that I Kind of equals to a competitor, uh, kind of like a competitor to the SSD of the PS5. It works, it's fast. If you're talking about storage and you're thinking that the well, the PS5 has better storage, there you go. I give you a very good storage. So don't complain about storage. Also, again, it's one terabyte, exactly what the amount you wanted. So we're going with it now. For the GP, went with the ASRock Challenger DOC your ID on RX 6600 XT. Um, in terms of performance, from what I read at least, there are three graphics cards that are equal, and I'm not even joking, it's equal to the performance of a PS5. You either get the RTX 2070, the RTX 3060, uh, normal 3060, 12 gigs, or you just get this guy. All of these three graphics cards are literally the same performance as the graphics of a PS5. Because there's one thing everyone for some reason keep forgetting, the PS5 is using upscaling. So there's not really an actual 4K screen or 4K image. You're not looking at a 4K image, by the way. You're looking at a upscaled image. So in a general sense, if you just forget about st that stuff, or you're thinking about in terms of performance, actual performance of the graphics of that system. PS5 is equal to, well, this graphics card. This is the reason why I went with it. The only downside for this graphics card is an 8 gigs of VRAM. I uh, would prefer that was more than that, especially with newer games, and especially since, well, on the PS5, they could just make the game run anyways. With an 8 gigs, it would be a little bit annoying. With that said, though, for the most part, it should work just fine. For the most part and um again in terms of performance similar performance to what you would get on a console this is it so yeah we're going with it the power supply went with the ap via prestige 600 watts 80 plus gold power supply uh it's not modular it's ketchup and mustard cables you literally can see the the that um not the best thing in the world but that said if you think about it the ps5 stuff is all inside uh and who cares what's inside i mean if i remember correctly the color of the, the pcb of a ps5 is green which is you know, a typical color but also really green so everyone has its own bad insides okay <laughs> so yeah it, it at least it's a gold certified power supply it's 600 watts which should be enough to power the the console uh even enough to even upgrade your um your storage and processor if i recall correctly should be enough and um yeah i mean it's it works with this with this pc and there is slight upgradability wouldn't recommend to upgrade to that extent though but if you want to upgrade storage just like how a ps5 does and maybe even upgrade the processor then yeah uh it works for the case we went to the cooler master 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 box q300l it's a micro atx uh tower it's um it's small. <laughs> it, it's it's a good case. It's a good case, but uh, it's not exactly the best case in the world. With that said, have you seen the cover and 
the casing of a PS5 Slim. We shouldn't be complaining that much. Uh, with that said, at least it's easier to open it on the PS5, so I guess, touche. Uh, with that said, it's good. It's a good case. As used to be 3.0 ports. Extras. Uh, take that, PS5. Um, two audio jacks. It's small. You can see through it. Ha. Huh. <laughs> sure. You know, it, it's good. It's it's 40 bucks. Uh, we're going with it. Also, it's mesh, I believe. So, um, good cooling. So the total price point for this PC build is around the $568.92. So $569. Nice. Um it's it's $69 more expensive than a PS5. Again, nice. Uh but if you think about it, you would probably spend money that extent that amount of money anyways to buy something for the PS5 with it. Uh, now, if you mention something like, well, you're getting all, you need to also get a screen for this and also keyboard and mouse and whatnot. First of all, remember the 60 bucks? Enough to buy pretty much the keyboard, the mouse, and the headset and the mouse pad. Uh, and it comes to the screen, you will still get a screen for the, well, for the PS5 anyway. So, in a general sense, if you think about it, you spend 100 bucks more to that, like, to that extent, you probably have a better experience than, uh, or 200 bucks since we're including also the screen, if you think about it, you pretty much get something that's much better than getting a PS5 with other things together. And in a general sense, it's it's better. But again, we're talking about the system itself, so the difference price point is just $69. So, nice. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're going with it. So that is it for today's video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, it is a video that is supposed to be a much better option for those who don't want to get a, a console or they're feeling that they don't know if they should get a console there's something better there is something better this is an example um this is in my opinion a console killer not the best console killer in the world but it is something that just makes you change your mind on getting a console and get this guy um the performance graphically is the same like it's literally the same it, you would get the same frame rates uh if I remember correctly, there is some sort of upscaling technology from AMD. So there you go. You get a console-like experience on a PC form. What else can you ask? Uh, again, it's not the most optimized thing in the world, but you have more options. So yeah. Also, game-wise, there is not a lot of games releasing on the PS5. Not good games, at least. Uh, there are some, but not to that extent. And you could only just play games on the PS5. You can't just do anything else. You can't really do that great of a live stream or editing. You really can't. When it comes to PC, though, you have much more options than just gaming. So you get something that's more towards professional use as well, not just gaming. So you get something as an overall scenario. While console is just for gaming. So again, it's better just to get this guy. So if you guys want to give me your opinions, if you guys want to talk about your own opinions, if you guys think I'm wrong, comment down below, share this video, give a like, uh, but mostly comment, share your, share your thoughts. Um, again, give a like, subscribe to you for more content. Share this video, and uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.